I'm Farmer Tom from Green Our Planet, and I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. Do you know where that is? Why, that's in the Mojave Desert. Do you know where the Mojave Desert is? And by the way, do you know what a desert is? What conditions make a desert a desert? Do you know? Well, come on, let's go find out. Deserts cover one third of the Earth's surface, and they are a very special environment. Do you know what an environment is? An environment is all the conditions that surround a plant or animal. For example, deserts are places that have very little rainfall. Rain sometimes doesn't fall for months, even years at a time. Can you imagine not having a drink of water for months or even years at a time? How long would you go without a drink of water? So, one characteristic of a desert environment is that it's a place that has very little rainfall. Deserts are places that have extreme temperatures, meaning they can get real hot and real cold. Temperatures can drop below freezing in the winter and get above 130 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. Whew, that is hot. Another characteristic of deserts is that they often have very poor soils. That means they have soils that are often sandy and rocky, and they don't have a, a lot of organic matter in them. Things like dead leaves and that sort of thing. That means that these soils in the desert have very few nutrients in them. So plants that live here have to be able to survive in an environment that has very little rain, poor soils, and can get really hot or really cold. By the way, there's still lots of plants and animals that live in the desert. Like for example, have you ever seen a camel? Have you ever noticed that camels have strange humps on their backs? Do you know why they have those humps? The humps are where camels store food so that they can travel long distances when there's very little to eat. Places such as deserts that have very few plants and lots of sand. Camels can also drink up to 20 gallons of water at a time. So if they find water, they can carry it a long ways in their stomachs. Can you imagine drinking 20 gallons of water? What would happen to you if you did? So, check out some of these plants we have growing in the Mojave Desert. Do you know what this is? 
This is called a Joshua tree. Do you have any idea how long these trees live? These Joshua trees can live for 500, sometimes even a thousand years. Can you imagine living that long? And do you know another interesting thing about Joshua trees? They have these long roots that can go down more than 30 feet into the ground to search for water. Take a look at this cactus and look at these spines. Does it remind you of anything? Well, this cactus is called a barrel cactus because it kind of looks like a barrel. But guess what? Barrel cactus not only look like a barrel, they also store water like a barrel. Do you see how swollen it is? Barrel cacti can survive in hot deserts with almost no water. When it rains, they suck up all the water and store it inside, almost like a camel does. Then, when it doesn't rain, they can gradually use up all the water that they've stored. Do you remember that I said that most deserts have poor soils with not a lot of nutrients in them? Look at this soil. It's almost like sand. If you tried to grow a tomato plant or a radish or a carrot, in this kind of soil, well, they wouldn't survive. But the plants growing here can. That's because they are adapted to a very special environment, what we call a desert. So, can you think of a place on this planet that's sort of like the opposite of a desert? Where there's lots of rain and lots of plants and it's green everywhere it's warm, but not too hot. That's right, a rainforest. Have you ever visited a rainforest? Would you like to see one? Come on, let's go. Like the desert, a rainforest has a very special environment. It's usually warm and humid. Do you know why it's so humid? Because in one week, the rainforest can get as much rainfall as the Mojave Desert gets in the entire year. All of that water helps to create an environment where there's lots of plants and trees and lots of different kinds of animals. Let's check some out. Oh, look, up in those trees. Do you see them? Monkeys. Monkeys spend their entire lives in trees, high up off the ground. So the best environment for a monkey is one that has lots of trees in it. If you captured a monkey and let it go in the Mojave Desert, where there are no trees, it wouldn't survive. Every animal and plant has its own particular environment that it does best in. Monkeys do great in the rainforest, whereas Camels and barrel cacti do well in the desert. But that makes me think about something. What about the environment in cities? What about the environment around your school? Do you have any plants growing around your school? Do you have a school garden? Would you like to visit one? Come on, let's go. So, we just visited a desert and a rainforest. These are natural habitats, which means that they've existed there for thousands of years, whether or not there are people. But now, we are at a school garden. And my question for you is, is this a natural habitat? Was this school garden created by nature? Or was this garden created by people? This garden here is located in Las Vegas, Nevada, which we already said is in the dry Mojave Desert. But look at all these plants. 
There's watermelon and peppers and Swiss chard. Well, we didn't see any of these plants growing in the desert, did we? Why do you think that they grow so well here, but not naturally in the desert? Do you have any idea? Did you just say water? Well, you're right. The plants that grow here in our garden need a lot more water than the, the rainfall of the desert can provide. These plants need a different environment than the desert to survive. So how do we change the environment so that these garden plants can survive? Well, do you see these black tubes right here? Do you know what they are? That's right, they're irrigation pipes. Every day, water flows through the irrigation tubes and out of those holes directly into the soil, watering the garden. That's so that the vegetables we are growing here have the water they need to survive. We're still in the Mojave Desert where it hardly ever rains, but every day we water these garden beds. We have altered the natural environment so that the plants that won't survive in the desert now have the extra water that they need. Let's take a look at another interesting thing about the garden environment. Take a look at this rich soil. Do you see how different it is from the sandy soil we saw in the desert? Well, we've added organic matter and nutrients to the soil because these plants need a richer soil than the soil that is in the desert. So once again, we have altered the environment so that these plants can thrive. So here's a question. What happens when an environment suddenly changes? If you eventually reduce the amount of water that's raining in the Amazon jungle to the amount of rainfall that's falling here in the desert, eventually that Amazon jungle would turn into a desert. And what would happen to all of those animals that live in that rainforest? What would happen to the monkeys that live in the trees? Well, without trees, they wouldn't be able to survive. Now, what do you think would happen if it started to rain in the desert as much as it does in the Amazon jungle? What if it rained in the desert every single day? Do you think the desert would stay the same? Of course not. The desert would gradually turn more and more green and lots of plants would start to grow. Eventually, our desert would become a forest and new animals would move in. Maybe even the monkeys. I have another question for you. What do you think would happen if we cut down all the trees in the rainforest? Do you think it would change the environment? So, if there's no trees, where would the monkeys and all the other animals that need trees live? Well, that is exactly what is happening in many parts of the world. People are cutting down all their trees and changing their environment. When people chop down trees, burn forests, and create pollution, do you think that makes the environment better or worse for the animals and plants that live there? Well, you're right. The more pollution that we put into our air, the warmer the planet gets. And the warmer the planet gets, the more the different environments around the planet will start to change. The rainforests will get drier and the deserts will get hotter. So, what can we do to keep our environments healthy and clean? Well, we can plant trees. Millions of them. Trees help clean the air and they store water. You could even plant one in your own backyard. Another thing we can do is to pollute less and not throw our trash in our environment. Pollution can kill fish in rivers and lakes and it can kill our trees too. So, the next time that you're outside and it's raining, I want you to think about how precious that rain is and how every plant and animal on this planet needs it to survive. Even we do. 
I'm Farmer Tom from Green Our Planet, and I'll see you next time. And remember, the Earth is the only planet in our solar system that has life on it. Which is why the Earth is the only planet that has such beautiful blues and greens. So let's remember to protect our planet and all of the life on it. Bye.